We're going to talk about Young's double slit diffraction, and we're going to be looking at intensity. And that's why I put this one here, camping is intense. <laughs> yes. So Young's double slit experiment, what is that? Well, that's when you take light and you pass it through two slits. That's why it's called double slit. So here's a slit and here's another slit, in other words, an opening. Now there's going to be a slit separation D here, lowercase d. Now that light is going to be projected onto a screen at the distance D away. And uh, that light now, it's going to interfere both constructively and destructively. So that's where they add up or, or cancel out. And it's going to make this interference pattern showing these fringes. And these fringes are going to have fringe separation S. Let me try to show you a little bit what's going on here. So maybe uh, what I'll do, I think, first is show you a, a few more rays here. So this light right here that's coming from this top slit, for example, maybe it's also going down to this point right here, like, you know, at this, uh, this point in the middle here. And maybe this light over here is also going there. So do you see how there's light basically going to different places here? And maybe from here to here, maybe they're interfering constructively. So they're adding up because there's path difference should be zero if it's right in the center here. So that means if I was going to draw the intensity pattern versus X here, this is going to be X is zero. And as I go up along here, this is going to be, it's like this thing right here is projected to the right here. So this is this X going to the right here. So that means it should start off with that maximum intensity and then it'll go down and it'll go back up again, it'll go down again, it'll go back up again and so on and so on. So something like this right here. So this will be this pattern. Now these uh, these right here are gonna be the fringes that are gonna be these tops right here. So this right here is a fringe and so is, for example, the top one here. These are all fringes. And if we talk about this fringe separation, what do we mean by that? That is this distance uh, S. So maybe like you know, the distance from this fringe to that fringe, for example, that we could call S. It's lowercase s here. That's this. Keep in mind, it's also from this center one to the next one. That would be from here to here, for example. So we have an equation uh, from our data booklet, and it goes like this. It just goes S equals lambda capital D over lowercase d. And this is, by the way, supposed to be a lowercase s, so maybe I'll redraw it just so it's really clear that it's a small s. Oops, you know, it doesn't even look like a small s. There we go. So this equation, I think the trick to this is just knowing what each letter means, okay? So this s is the fringe separation, lambda is the wavelength of a light, capital D is the distance from the slits to the screen. I remember that because capital D, it's usually like the bigger distance, whereas this is a smaller distance, so that's like a lowercase d. Um, well, that's how I remember them at least. So these are these different fringes here. So let's do an example. We have laser light of 633 nanometers. Now, what does that mean? That is the wavelength of the light. Don't forget what a nanometer is. That's 10 to the power of minus 9. Remember, you can look that up in your data booklet if you need to. And it's shining on two slits that are 0.25 millimeters apart. Don't forget millimeters. Those are times 10 to the minus 3. And what letter is this right here? These two slits, this is the separation of the slits. This is lowercase d here. That's what this is. This one here was lambda. The question is, how far apart will the fringes be? Ooh, the fringe separation we want. S. That's what we're actually looking for here. We want S. And uh, on the screen that is 6.1 meters away, that is capital D. That's this one. So really, it's just a matter of uh, using this equation. So how does the equation go again? Remember, it goes S equals lambda capital D over lowercase d. I'm just going to put in my numbers. I didn't even have to rearrange. If I'm looking for S, it's actually pretty straightforward. So that means I have S equals, let's see, wavelength, which is 633 times 10 to the power of minus 9. All that times capital D, which is 6.1 meters, divide that by lowercase d, which is 0 0.25, and don't forget, times 10 to the power of minus 3. So I can just solve this on my calculator, can't I? I can just get out my calculator, and let's see. First, I want a fraction, and I'm going to do, let's see, it was 633 times 10 to the minus 9. I'll do that now, 633 times 10 to the minus 9 times, I want 6.1 here. Then on the bottom, I put the 0 0.25, and don't forget, times 10 to the minus 3. I get this answer here. I get 0 0.0154452.
So I should write this answer to probably two significant figures here because that's the least that I've been given. So that means I can say that S is equal to approximately, let's see, this will be point, uh, 0 0.015, let's say. So I can say 0 0.015 meters. Uh, maybe even better would be to say uh, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2. Maybe that's even better. So I'll say that. So 1.5. This is super clear that I've only got two significant figures, meters. Or I could also say um, S equals, I can just say 1.5 centimeters because that's what those are. So either of those answers are here will be okay. I kind of like this one right here. Or I could say this one right here. But there we go. It's a pretty simple example, but that's really how you can use these. You might be asked for questions on an exam like, hey, which of these quantities will make the fringe separation bigger? If that was the case, don't forget you should either make lambda bigger, or you can make capital D bigger, or you can make lowercase d smaller. Those would be things that would make this here bigger. So those kind of questions that are sort of, yeah, qualitative, you know, just like what changes do you need to make? So that you could also be able to answer just with this equation right here.